Hey, hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with Studio Web, Killer Sites, and other sites. In this vblog, it's, uh, well, the title of the blog is Getting Ahead of the Coding Trend. So what is this about? Well, I'll get to the point. When you are looking at your coding career, whether as a freelancer or looking to get a job somewhere, what you should do is not look at what necessarily is hot now or what was hot five years ago or two years ago. You should, you should try to look ahead maybe a year from now, a year and a half from now, depending on what your timeline is. What do I mean by that? If you're just starting to learn how to code, it's going to take you a few months at least to get some basic skill sets so you can start taking on little jobs. Now, little jobs means little jobs for small businesses and need little things here and there. And in, a, in another video, I can get into that whole uh, process, or you can look it up elsewhere. There's lots of videos on that. So uh, what I mean by getting ahead of the trend, you got to look at what's coming up. Uh, right now, 2016, this is late June 2016, uh, June 27th, um, what's really the hot language, especially for uh, 2017, is server-side JavaScript programming. So I'm talking about Node.js, maybe Express.js, but definitely Node.js. Now, I'm not saying that JavaScript server-side coding is the best ever. No, no, no. I would not use Node.js and server-side JavaScript for big projects in terms of the whole framework. I would use it for, uh, for microservices or services within a larger project. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just check out some previous videos I talk about it. The point you want to take away from this vblog, and I've seen it over and over again since the 90s when I started to write code, is that you want to get slightly ahead of the market. You don't want to get too far ahead. You don't want to, get, you don't want to go to the bleeding edge because a lot of times bleeding edge technologies, whether they be frameworks, whether they be uh, languages, they won't make it anywhere. A lot of times bleeding edge technologies just crash and burn. But you want to get something that you see that's growing, it's popular, there's a lot of hype, and it's and you see that uh, there's definitely a lot of demand building for it. Um, and right now, that's JS. So again, when I'm talking about languages and frameworks in general, uh, a lot of uh, little nerds, not little nerds, a lot of nerds, young, intermediate level nerds in terms of the business end, people with three, four years of experience, they they assume wrongly that I'm criticizing the technology itself. So when I say that, uh, for instance, in a recent video, I said, I would not learn Ruby on Rails today. I'm not saying Ruby on Rails is a bad technology. In fact, it's a very good technology, but... It represents an older style of web app development that's slowly fading. Now, I'm sure I would imagine Ruby guys, the Rails guys, are going to be updating it accordingly. But nonetheless, it seems to be losing its mojo. And all the uh, young nerds are going, hey, it's all about JavaScript now. And Node, that's where the popularity is. And uh, though Node still has some problems, a little immature in some areas, a little mixed up, which is normal for new technologies. Uh, some huge players are using Node to great effect. That's the biggest one I know of is Netflix. They use Node.js. They use server-side JavaScript for some of their uh, their apps. So that's that's something to be said about that. Nonetheless, the main point of this is to always think a little bit ahead, not too far ahead, so you you know you don't get find yourself in a dead end, but just a little bit ahead, and that's where you're going to find all the action, all the activities. Now, I know this from experience, so let me go way back, way back when many of you were still young kids dreaming of your first date, although some of you might be dreaming of your first date now. But anyway, um, yeah, this is back in the 90s, 1996, where I got a, g a gig, a job, to take an an app and to update it. So they came to me, the client came to me and said, we want to update this app. And the app was written in, which was at the time, the most used uh, technology to create database driven websites. That's in those days, that's what, what, what we would call web apps, database driven websites. Why? Because any web app is, well, not any, but just about all of them have a database 
hooked up to them to store all the information about uh, your users and so on. Anyway, so in the day, everybody was using Perl CGI. Perl CGI, don't have to wor worry about the technology. It's still out there, but I would, don't use it. Don't use it. Of course, now I'm going to get all kinds of hate mail from the Perl people. But anyway, so uh, Perl is cool for its time. But so when I looked at this project, I was aware of something that was cutting edge, kind of new at the time. But it was not cutting edge or it was bleeding edge. It was cutting edge. Bleeding edge is you don't want to touch. You want to look at it poke around it, that's bleeding edge. Cutting edge, you could use it. So with this new technology, it was called ASP, Active Server Pages. Again, don't use it, it's very old. This is now we call it classic ASP. And it came out in 96, and it was the first technology that I'm aware of that did this page type of uh, dynamic coding. And anyway, I won't get into specifics. Bottom line was is that this technology was far more productive, far more productive than Perl CGI. You just, you just did things so much more quickly. And uh, so for this particular project, I said to the guy, well, listen, we could try to update this app that you spent a year, you hired a team to do for a year, or we could just do from scratch with a brand new technology, which is much, much better. And there's a, normally I would not do that, by the way. Normally... You, you want to baby an app and keep uh, refactoring it, which means, you know, you know, processing and streamlining the code, especially these days. But back in those days, the technology was moving so quickly. Things were getting so quick, so uh, moving so quickly in terms of improvements that it made sense to look at new techno technology uh, reasonably often. So anyway, this was the situation. So I did it from scratch using classic ASP. And something that took a year before with Perl CGI, I was able to do on my own in 30 days with classic ASP, and it had more features, and it was better. Of course, I didn't have to work out a lot of details in terms of how it was functioning, because I saw it wasn't exactly working very well, but I saw basically what they wanted to see. And that's a big part of the development process, is, is figuring out for yourself or for the client exactly how you want the app to be. It's a lot easier to reproduce an app as in build than to build and come up with a concept from scratch. So there you go. That's just one example how using a, a cutting edge technology gave me a huge advantage in the marketplace. So I was able to get this job. It took a year to previously, to previously do. I was able to do it in 30 days. And uh, the client was impressed with me. And then I got contracts for all their companies. They had several companies because it, you know, I was able to do good work. So there are times you always got to keep your eye out rather for newer technologies. You got to be careful about pulling the trigger on investing your time into something. But you also, uh, especially as noobs, beginners, I'm assuming you're a beginner watching this or a new, newish person, you also have to be mindful of... Uh, uh, of not getting caught up with an old technology because you love it. You got to be aware of market forces. So, for instance, with myself, I spent most of my career as a coder really writing Java code. I wrote more Java code than any other language. But when I got pretty mature in my coding skills, you know, seven, six, seven, eight years of coding, um, it got to a point where I would look at a project look at what it need to, what needed to be done, and then I would choose a language accordingly. And sometimes it wasn't a language I liked or I was very fond of, but it was the best language for that particular job. So don't get married to your language, your technology. You know, Find the best technology for the job. And that takes experience. That takes judgment. So uh, there you go.